I like to consider myself an expert or connoisseur of all things paranormal and supernatural, meaning that I have at least a passing knowledge of most urban legends, famous encounters, and other creepy things. It is rare that I encounter a tale of which I have never even heard of, such is the case with a story so buried that I hadn't discovered it until recently. This encounter felt so strange and unnerving that it left me genuinely baffled. How about this? Today we will look into the real life Pennywise the Dancing Clown, alien from another world, creeping on children every color of the rainbow event that was the Sandown Clown Incident. Sandown Bay is located on an island just off the southern coast of Great Britain. This island, called the Isle of Wight, is the second most populous island in England. It has been a very popular vacation destination since Victorian times. So begins our tale. In May of 1973, two children were vacationing near Lake Common Road on the Sandown Bay. The first girl, known only by the alias Faye, and the other, a boy, who has remained unnamed. They were exploring the hills behind the Shacklin and Sandown Golf Club. Being roughly seven years old at the time, they were likely enjoying their time playing games and running around the hills. They had approached a wooden bridge in a swampy area just outside the Sandown Airport when their fun was interrupted. Coming from under the bridge was a strange wailing sound, not all too dissimilar to an ambulance siren. They investigated the noise, which brought them to the foot of the bridge where the sounds ceased. When they got there, quote, a blue-gloved hand appeared from under the bridge and a strange figure emerged, unquote. They described the figure as extremely tall, clearly over seven feet. Despite this, it appeared that the children had startled the being and had dropped a book that it was holding into the trickling stream beneath the bridge. It grabbed the soggy book and it ran directly into a nearby metal structure with no windows. And when I say ran, I mean it kind of hopped, similar to how the Apollo astronauts on the moon walked around on the surface. That kind of like bounce, hop, jump, skip thing. Anyway, Faye and the boy followed it to the structure where it re-emerged, carrying, quote, a black knobbed microphone with a white flex attached. It began to make a siren-like wail again. The two children became frightened and began to run away. After seeing this, the entity stopped and greeted them, saying, Hello, are you still there? The kids thought the voice sounded friendly, so they approached it, this time getting a good look at it. Here is their description. Now before I do that, I will preface this by saying, in all my years of reading and researching myths, legends, and stories, have I ever heard anything like this. As I said earlier, it was tall, close to seven feet tall. It was humanoid, but had no neck. Its head was sort of wedged onto its shoulders. It wore a green tunic with a red collar that fastened it to a pointed yellow hat on its head. A black knob was fixed to the top of the hat, and wooden antennae were attached to either side of the hat. In place of eyes, there were triangles. For a nose, a brown square and it had yellow lips that wouldn't move when it spoke. Its skin was white and had symbols similar to the division symbol on its cheeks. It had a tuft of red hair that popped out of the hat and fell onto its forehead. It was also said to have only three fingers on each hand and three toes on each foot. Here is a sketch that was done of it. Anyways, the thing had wrote something on a page from its book. It showed it to Faye, but it was just a bunch of jumbled words in no particular order. It then pointed to the words that it wanted her to read. Eventually, she read out loud, Hello, and I am all colors Sam. Now, Faye asked Sam if he was human, but she replied, No. Then she asked if he was a ghost, and his response confuses me and makes me feel a bit uneasy. He replied, well, not really, but I am in an odd sort of way. They further pressed him by asking what he was, and all he said was, you know, and never elaborated further. I want to stop for a second and ask, what the freak did he mean by you know? That just sends shivers down my spine. 
Like, am I supposed to know what that is? Is that something that is everywhere? Ooh, I don't like that. Anyway, the kids described the way all colors Sam spoke as stilted, comparing it to a ventriloquist to dummy. Sam went on to tell them that he really didn't have a true name and that there were others like him. He drew a picture of another all color Sam and showed it to the kids. He confessed that he was actually scared of humans, and he feared that if he was found, humans would attack him. He invited the kids into his little metal shack. They crawled through a little flap on the front door, inside on the first floor, and was rather bare, with just wooden furniture and an electric heater. It had wallpaper that was blue-green in color and was patterned in strange dial shapes. He also said he had a secret camp somewhere, but he didn't disclose that location. All Color Sam proceeded to remove his pointy hat and place a berry in his ear. He said that he was out collecting berries for food, but he placed it in his ear and he tipped his head forward and it rolled into his ear and reappeared in his eye socket. He repeated the action and it rolled away from his eye and reappeared in his mouth. The kids spent the next half hour talking to Sam, asking questions and only getting vague responses. Faye eventually would convey her encounter with her father. He was initially unconvinced she was being truthful and thought it was make-believe or a shared hallucination. This would upset Faye extremely. Eventually, he came around to believing her due to Riggy counting his own run-ins with UFOs in the years prior. In October of 1970, Faye's father was driving towards St. Helens on the Isle of Wight. While driving, he spotted a, quote, large multi-lit aircraft flying just above the marshes. It followed him for some time until he stopped and began flashing a light toward them. Now in March of 1972, he was by the cliffs of Compton Bay. He got trapped on the beach by a sudden tidal surge as if something large was rising out of the water. Or just below the surface of the water, there were two glowing yellow lights. He described the lights like the eyes of a sea monster that were peering at him. He eventually went to the place where Faye and the boy encountered All Color Sam. He couldn't find the shack or anything unusual. He does claim that the children may have been taken to a bubble of alien reality, as he says. So that's the story. Definitely up there is one of the weirdest stories I've ever heard, but here are some of the most common explanations. First, All Color Sam was a creepy guy dressed as a clown to lure children into the woods. Now this is just as creepy and way more realistic, especially with the likes of John Wayne Gacy, known as the Killer Clown, who was active around this time. However, the fact that the kids just kind of left without any issue, as well as the extremely unusual things that were happening, make me think that this wasn't it. The other thing was Sam was a shared hallucination. Maybe something bad did happen to the kids. We don't know much about them. And maybe they did find a creep in the woods and they were traumatized. And all color Sam may have just been a machination of their minds creating as a coping me mechanism. The next one is Sam was just made up. They were kids after all. Kids make up stuff all the time and can sometimes lose touch with reality. Or they may have just made it up as a prank. Who knows? Now next are some of the more fun ones. Sam was a spirit. He may have been a confused ghost, hence his answer when asked if he was. Well, not really, but I am in an odd sort of way. Maybe he's not a dead person. Maybe he's a non-mortal spirit, a being who never was alive, who was a spirit from the beginning. Who knows? Here's my favorite. Sam was an alien. This is the most common connection, especially because of the encounters that the father had. Some say he may have been from another world and that the metal shack was his spaceship and he was in a, like a, a space suit. Others think that he was some sort of extra dimensional being. Now things get more interesting here. We've all heard about the men in black. I'll probably do a video on them in the future. Now the encounters people have had with the men in black have shown some similarities to the encounter with Sam. 
I should say that the men in black are nothing compared to the ones that are in the movies. They're often in black suits and hats, and they don't act like regular people. They exhibit very strange behaviors and mannerisms. They will often arrive after an encounter with UFOs and ask questions regarding them. Some even think they aren't even human, just pretending to be human, hence the kind of the weird mannerisms. In 1978, a Dr. Herbert Hopkins said he was visited by Men in Black in his home in Maine, USA. He described the Men in Black as being hairless. Its skin looked like it was plastic and it was pale as the snow. It spoke in a similar stilted way, like a machine, and its mouth moved like a ventriloquist dummy. And there are countless other examples of the strange and weird encounters people have had with the Men in Black. And it's not a perfect similarity, I'll admit, but there are similar things about the encounter, and I'll just leave it at that. The story has stuck with me for months since I first heard it, and it seems just so absurd, and I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know if I should be scared or not of Sam. He seems friendly, but what if that's just an act? The not knowing is what truly disturbs me about it. And let me know what you guys think. Leave it in the comments, your theories and ideas. And if you have any other creepy stories or anything you want me to look into. Anyway, if you like this and want more spooky stories, ghost hunts, scary game playthroughs, and other spooky things, be sure to subscribe for more. Until next time, stay spooky, friends. <laughs>